Okay, thanks uh, for joining um, my session. Um, it's called Embracing uh, Language Service for Blockchain Development. I try to put as many buzzwords as possible in, into um, the title. Um, let, let us uh, look at what it's about. Um, just one word to me. Um, I'm Carsten. I'm working for a company in Germany called Itemis. And uh, we are specialized on um, tool development. And that's actually what, uh, what it's about today. And um, yeah, of course, uh, we want to uh, talk a little bit about blockchains. And one uh, blockchain uh, platform is Ethereum. Did you hear um, about the Ethereum already? OK. And um, yeah, short words about that. Um, Ethereum is a foundation. Um, who runs um, yeah, a platform which allows you to, um, to execute smart contracts on a blockchain. So what is a smart contract? Actually, a smart contract is a piece of code that you can deploy and execute um, on a blockchain. So somehow you have to be, uh, develop these uh, contracts. So in these contracts, you, uh, you can say, OK, uh, under, under which conditions you, uh, do you transfer money from A to B? or something like this. And um, yeah, you compile that code and deploy it to the blockchain, and it's distributed uh, over the blockchain. And so um, it get, gets available uh, for everyone. And it's, um, yeah, um, it's not uh, yeah, infringible. Um, that's one of the benefits of uh, blockchains. And uh, to execute smart contracts, you actually need to have kind, some kind of money. It's called gas and has actually value. So um, you can buy gas, and you have to use gas to execute transactions. And yeah, what can you do with that, for example? It depends on, um, uh, yeah, on how many transactions uh, are running at the moment on the blockchain. Um, this this, de uh, this um, determines the price of the gas. So when many people are running um, transactions um, at the same time and try to uh, to uh, get one transaction to one uh, block, um, that the gas prices um, um, increases, and leads, this lead uh, for uh, lead to some um, strange effect. Um, one of the most uh, uh, popular uh, applications on the blockchain, uh, on the Ethereum blockchain, is uh, uh, selling and buying kittens. <laughs> and uh, when many people do this, um, it, uh, these kittens get horribly expensive and. Uh, I don't know who, who does this, but uh, this uh, was one of the uh, use cases that increased the Ethereum um, um, uh, gas price. But the big question is, how do we actually program something from the blockchain? Um, that's um, yeah, what, what we need uh, to talk a little bit about. And um, there are many programming languages out there, but the most popular um, for, um, for Ethereum are called Solidity and Viper. And I will, call, um, I will talk now about the Solidity language. So what is Solidity? It's a complete programming language. And with that programming language, you can write contracts. It's similar to, class con uh, to a class concept. So you have um, values, you have um, functions that you can call. And this uh, programming language, um, yeah, provides you literally everything that, that you uh, know from the modern um, pro uh, programming language, like multiple inheritance and, uh, and uh, extension methods and multiple return values. And so um, literally, I think everything um, is in this language. Um, so you have a nice uh, language to define contracts. And uh, this contract um, can be compiled to uh, byte code uh, for the Ethereum J um, virtual machine, and then you can deploy it um, to the virtual machine. And I'm a tool developer. I'm interested in providing good support uh, for, for, that, um, uh, for that language. There's actually um, uh, an IDE provided by Ethereum, which is called Remix. And it is um, a web-based IDE. Um, let's see if you have an internet connection, then I can show you live a little bit. So, yeah, here it is. Uh, hello. 
So this is actually um, uh, Solidity code. You can add this online, and uh, you, yeah, you can write simple programs uh, and compile that code. Actually, this code um, is not compilable because there's uh, some syntax error in it, um, and this is marked here. Yeah. But this is not really a good IDE. For example, uh, yeah, this is really annoying here. Um, and when I press, for example, content assist, uh, I literally see every keyword, uh, every word that, that is in the program and not what makes sense here. Um, I do not see um, uh, uh, documentation, other documentation like Java Docs uh, we are used to, or I cannot cross-reference to elements that are defined somewhere else. Um, this is all these things that we are used from uh, modern um, IDEs is not available. <coughs> so. Coming back, we have a complex language, but the tooling is really crappy. Um, and um, the problem is, if you make uh, errors here in contracts, then uh, you can really lose money. There was uh, one uh, um, bug uh, in 2017 where someone um, uh, by accident called a suicide method on a, um, on a contract, which uh, yeah, led, uh, led to, uh, to the fact that um, yeah, millions of dollars were locked in the, in the blockchain and just lost. So it's really important that you know what you're programming there. And so you should see if there are errors in there, if something make, doesn't make sense, maybe um, uh, yeah, uh, do some... Uh, um, uh, decent analysis and so, and what you actually know from normal programming languages. So what we can we do about that? Um, and this is what I'm what actually to talk about is um, a tool that we created, um, the Yakini Solidity tools. And in this tool, we uh, uh, implemented the Solidity language and providing a language server. What this means, um, I'm uh, telling you now about that. So, coming back to, to a small demo, showing this live. So we see here, um, again, Solidity code. And, um, oops. And I, oh, okay. okay. And you see, for example, um, here um, at the very beginning, this is uh, one thing that in Solidity is the first statement, a Pragma, which uh, compiler version should be used, and maybe it's not the latest one. And, um, and here we get um, immediately a, a proposal, okay, you should maybe upgrade to that. You can use the quick fix here and immediately change that. You can have... Um, uh, Content assist, um, for example, if I press here, um, then I get only get proposed what makes sense here to, uh, to enter. Or here, which functions uh, can I call? So we have, we have static uh, information about the types. And all what uh, and all what you uh, what are you you used from one of the languages. We take this now a step further. Um, this is working progress. Um, we are also building a tool which is called the Yakindo State Chart Tools. And actually, you can think about a contract uh, like a state machine. So uh, you can uh, uh, model this uh, now visually. And from that um, state machines, we just cross compile to um, to Solidity code and then deploy that uh, to the blockchain. So and this can also be simulated. So you can um, simulate uh, what effect uh, does it have if you uh, transfer some money or what, whatever. Yeah, but uh, this is 
Eclipse space. You saw, um, and um, some people do not li like Eclipse. Um, I actually ha love Eclipse. I use it every day. But I, I totally understand that uh, there are other editors outside there. And um, yeah, you may want to use um, the language not only in Eclipse, but uh, maybe for different platforms. And actually, we provide um, the Solidity language already on, on four editors. Besides Eclipse, um, we also support uh, Eclipse here. I, I will show you that in a, man, in a minute. Uh, it's a web-based um, editor, Visual Studio Code and Atom, and more to come. How do we achieve this? And here we come to the language servers. What is a language server? We have typically a problem um, when we develop languages that uh, there are several IDEs out there. And for each language and each um, IDE, you have to implement tooling. And uh, yeah, if you would implement uh, this um, natively for each uh, IDE, yeah, 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 then the language provider has uh, plenty to do. Actually, uh, the language provider does not uh, want to um, get bothered uh, how uh, it is integrated into um, a certain IDE. Um, on the other side, the uh, IDE or editor developers uh, don't want to care about languages. Um, they're coming languages every day, and uh, they can't support everything. Um, and um, yeah, the IDEs get blown up with, uh, with the t uh, all the toolings uh, that, um, that support the languages here. Um, and, when, and here um, comes something in which is called the language server protocol. Um, when Microsoft uh, started developing Visual Studio Code, they had exactly the same problem. Um, they developed a new IDE based on a TypeScript, and uh, they uh, needed uh, language support for TypeScript and C Sharp and others. And then they thought, okay, uh, do we re-implement the wheel again? No, they said, okay, we can define a protocol which is um, tool uh, agnostic and um, which decouples the editor from the language. So the editor is just um, dumb and says, OK, I'm opening that file and uh, editing here something. I want to um, press content assist. Um, what can you offer me? And a language server um, is uh, doing the hard stuff then for the language. So um, the language uh, server no knows now, OK, you're currently adding this file, and at that offset, you want to show um, content assist. I can you show these um, um, offers. And this um, was a good idea. And um, there uh, stepped some other ID uh, de developers um, up and uh, implemented also this standard. And so all the IDE developers are now um, yeah, driving this standard together with Microsoft. And um, so you can now provide languages independently from the IDEs. The language server protocol is based on uh, JSON RPC. So basically, it's uh, sending JSON messages uh, from, from tool to, um, to the server and back. And um, yeah, works roughly like that. Um, you have a tool. A user clicks uh, on document. And uh, it says, OK, I want to, to open a document and tells the server, here, this file is opened. Then you start editing. Um, then um, the tool uh, sends um, text changes to the uh, server. It knows, oh, ah, you are editing this document. I'm en uh, entering a uh, word. Um, and you, uh, the server on the other side can also send messages back to the tool. Say, OK. What you entered is not really valid. Um, this, we have a syntax error here, and this is my message. There's a broad uh, number of clients um, nowadays available uh, that support the language server protocol. Um, and on the other side, also a broad um, variety of languages. And yeah, this is ongoing work. Um, but uh, you can expect that um, all um, uh, editors and IDEs will support that protocol. 
Actually, it does um, only cover um, yeah, the typical 80% of what you actually need uh, for, um, for, uh, for the tooling. And each tool has its own uh, tweaks and uh, which cannot be covered by a common protocol. But yeah, the normal things that you, uh, that you do um, is, uh, is done in the protocol already. And you can also extend the protocol, but then um, the extension must be known both by the uh, client and the server. Quick fix is um, such an example, which is only provided by, by the Eclipse ID. And uh, we provide implementation for quick fixes, and um, yeah, you can see that uh, then in Eclipse. The protocol is um, language independent, um, but there exists uh, a binding for Java. So uh, when you're programming uh, any language uh, which are based on uh, uh, or implemented in Java, uh, then it's good to start with um, this uh, project LSP4J. It's a framework, it's a library uh, that implements all the messages um, uh, that uh, the protocol defines. And of course, if you uh, program a language server in a different language, then you have to um, use a different library. We, we implemented that uh, with Java, and especially with a um, framework called Xtext. Um, that's actually uh, my work, what I'm daily doing. I'm working on that project, and uh, Xtext is uh, a framework to develop languages. So when you want to Im uh, implement programming languages or domain-specific languages, um, then this is the way to go. Um, with Xtext, you can uh, uh, yeah, uh, describe very simple um, a language defined by a grammar, uh, create all the implementation, and you get all the editor integration out of the box. And also, you can build language server with, with that. So I will now dig a little bit into the code to give you an uh, impression what's behind that to build a language server for Solidity. And this is um, our development environment. See, it's quite a bunch of projects that we have here, but um, there's one uh, project that is most important. Um, which contains the language definition. And uh, if you're known a little bit uh, uh, to language design, then you, uh, you, you know that uh, you need some kind of grammar to describe um, the language. Um, it's uh, yeah, closely to a BNF form, but uh, we um, mix um, concrete and abstract syntax. Um, so we also see um, keywords that the language supports in the grammar. What we do from this is generate a grammar for Antler. So um, behind um, our parser technology is Antler, um, but we, um, this, uh, this grammar is much simpler than the Antler grammar. And so here's um, the complete definition of, um, of Solidity language. Um, it's not that huge, um, just four lines of code uh, you, um, to need, uh, that you need for all the rules. And um, yeah, when you, when you have de defined that, um, you typically run a code generator. And this is uh, what, uh, when XX comes in, into play and uh, generates the infrastructure for, um, for the tooling. So what you get is um, the parser, you get um, syntax highlighting, you get cross-linking, so scoping um, is implemented. We have a nice outline view here. So it can, where is it? I think it's, it's ah, it's here. Okay, so you can directly uh, navigate to elements this is uh, what, you, what you get for free for when you use XX for any language that you develop. And Solidity is just one example that, that we develop with that. Now let's have a look at the language server. Um, so we saw already um, that uh, 
that it's working in the Eclipse. And now let's look at Thier. So this is uh, now a browser IDE. You could, uh, you could deploy this uh, on the web. And um, yeah, you have the same things that you, um, that you are used to from, uh, from the Eclipse editor. So it, it proposes you what you can do here. It reports when you're uh, writing something wrong. So whatever you, uh, you, uh, you need. And uh, yeah, the server behind that is the same in Eclipse, in Thea, in Atom, in uh, Visual Studio. You develop the language once, create an application. It's actually a runnable Java application just. Um, and um, then you need to provide tool-specific um, yeah, integration. Um, for Eclipse, you, you would uh, need to write a small um, Eclipse plugin, which uh, uses LSP4E, for example. Um, in Visual Studio Code, you would write a VS Code extension, which is an uh, NPM package. Um, same for Fear. And yeah, it depends on, uh, on the tool, how it integrates the language server. Basically, what it do does is uh, you describe, this is my file extension. And whenever you open a file extension, start the language server and communicate with that. So this is the integration work. But um, the language server is uh, just wrote, uh, written once. Okay. So let's wrap up. Um, we have Ethereum, uh, which is a um, platform to, uh, to um, execute uh, smart contracts. To execute them, you need money and gas. And uh, to write such contracts, you need a uh, programming language, and one of those is um, Solidity. With the language server protocol, um, we are uh, we are able now to uh, develop one language and provide it to uh, different IDEs. Almost all of IDEs uh, support that at the moment. And um, yeah, we just implemented a, a Solidity language, which was an existing language, with means of, uh, of Xtext. And so we got a language server for, for Solidity. Yeah, and so we have um, yeah, uh, provide good tooling now for, for this uh, programming language. OK, I'm already done. Uh, I'm open now for questions. Yes? Um, yeah, maybe some, some very important thing to, uh, uh, to talk about, uh, or maybe the question. What, uh, what about privacy? Send, um, does it send a uh, file? Um, one important uh, thing about language servers is um, the, the word server is uh, misleading. It's not that you run the uh, language server somewhere on a server and uh, the client is on a different machine. It's usually bound to the same machine. It's just uh, separation of concerns. You have uh, one process, which is the, cl uh, the client, the tool, and the server um, on the same machine, also on the, on the same file system. And it's uh, even bound to the user. So uh, it interacts uh, with the user. Yes? Uh, is it hard to, to add uh, LSP support to Xtext? Question is, is it hard to add LSP support to Xtext? Um, answer is no. Um, it's actually quite easy. Um, and um, uh, it's already integrated. So you don't have to care about that. So. The framework Xtext integrates um, uh, language server for support um, um, through LSP4J, and you just um, don't have to care about that. So um, the only thing is that uh, you have to build your language um, using Maven or Gradle, and uh, you can get this out of the box that, uh, you, um, that you, have, you, you get build scripts that produce your language server for that. Question behind? Uh, have any experiences regarding uh, integration of language server in the language platform? Question is uh, do we have experience uh, with integrating uh, language server in, in IntelliJ? Yes, but not good ones. Um, uh, it's actually uh, at the moment uh, that uh, IntelliJ is um, lagging behind. Um, 
Uh, they have uh, there's some uh, some plugin developed externally that provides the language server support, um, but uh, yeah, it works okayish. Um, no, um, the, the best uh, um, LSP support you actually get at the moment is um, Visual Studio um, and Eclipse. Um, question was um, how is Ethereum involved here? Um, was it our initiative to develop this language? Um, um, yes, it was our initiative because uh, we uh, we started to uh, uh, to work with uh, Ethereum, um, and uh, then we saw okay, tool sucks. Uh, you can't really work with that. And uh, we are an expert in uh, in language development, so that we said okay, we start with that, but. Um, uh, the Ethereum Foundation is, uh, is a foundation that uh, collects money from its members and also spreads money to, uh, to, um, to users. And we, uh, we got a grant to, to work on uh, Solidity tools. Um, so they partially funded um, uh, the, the development now. Okay, then no more questions. Um, Thank you very much for your attention.